Hi, my name's Tom Stanton, and I'm known in some circles as the Chainsaw Man because I go to disasters and I sharpen chainsaws at disasters. And I sharpen chainsaws in what appears to be or has come to be a unique way. I use a Dremel tool. Uh, I find that a Dremel tool is much, much faster than the chop method of sharpening and it does a much better job and it also makes your chain last longer. Now there are some criticisms of this and uh, they're kind of like uh, urban legends. The urban legend is that if you use a Dremel tool and it turns the tooth black um, then you've ruined the tooth. But the truth is, the only thing that turns black when done properly is the oil and the wood fiber built up on the back of the saw. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, and the only way you're going to damage the tooth is if you stay on the tooth long enough to turn it blue. And if you look at the chain, you're going to see that um, the tooth has a white line across the front of it when it's dull and on the top of the tooth there's a lot of dirt and uh, darkness and that's two ways to tell that your chain is dull the optimum way of telling if a chain is dull is by the chips that it throws out if it's not throwing chips uh, it's dull and what it throws uh, what it really throws when it's dull is dust and if it's a powder when it comes off the blade uh, out of the chainsaw then it is dull and it needs to be sharpened. There's a verse in the Bible that talks about uh, chainsaw sharpening, believe it or not. Well, maybe not chainsaw sharpening, but it, the same principle applies. Uh, he that cuts wood with a dull chainsaw is endangered thereby, and he that doesn't take time to sharpen his chainsaw uh, wastes time, energy, and money. And uh, hear the nature in the background. Uh, the uh, verse comes from Ecclesiastes 10, 9 and 10. Um, and I guess the way to show this, well, first of all, let me tell you how I got into this. I used, started sharpening saws in 1973 when I was uh, logging in Montana, and um, out of Lincoln, Montana. And I used a file, hand file, which is very conventional, and I used that for many, many years. But when I went to my first tornado in Siren, Wisconsin, I sharpened by hand for four days, uh, almost nonstop. And I needed a better way to do it. So I went back to my home church in Grand Rapids, and my pastor bought me two of these. And they, this hooks to a battery, and I went back and I sharpened another 10 days at Siren, Wisconsin with these. I was given a small generator at Katrina, and from there on, uh, the sharpening went much, much better. Uh, I w quit using the orange ones, 100% Dremel, and it, it worked out fantastic. Um, in sharpening with a Dremel tool, um, what's involved is just coming into the tooth and following the angle on the tooth. A lot of people say, oh, how do I follow the angle? Well, if you're really concerned about it, Dremel makes a guide. But for me, uh, the guide gets in the way. Um, what I do is I come in and there's two angles that you need to follow. You need to follow this angle and this angle, okay? And it's very easy. You follow the angle, you come in, you go back and forth until the white line disappears. Now, sometimes that white line will appear as a black line or a gap between the sharpening stone and the tooth. Okay, now I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, I just come in. Now that tooth is razor sharp right now. See how it peels fingernail? And this is the one, this one will not, next to it, will not uh, peel fingernail. So I come in just that much. And see how that peels the fingernail? Okay, that's a sharp tooth. And you just go around the saw.
and just continue going around the saw when you get completely around you just turn and go the other way every one of those teeth that I sharpened uh, just now is razor sharp it'll it'll just peel fingernail all over the place now you may be wondering what kind of stones are those that he's putting in the Dremel well I get them from a company called Granberg Granberg makes what I found to be the best stones out there I do have a few stones um, from other places I've got some diamond stones this is a uh, stone cooler you dip your stone into it when you're really busy with it uh, these are some actual Dremel stones this workbench that I've built here is very very portable um, it's made out of a uh, 2 by 12 uh, it's about 24 inches long and it's got a saw jaw mounted on it and it's got a place to hang my Dremel tools and it's got a counter people were always asking me well how many saws do you do and I'm saying I don't know and they say well how do you you know and so I got a counter and uh, this uh, last trip to um, Moore Oklahoma uh, I did 173 blades in uh, two days and so um, you can sell, see that I was doing quite a bit. Uh, I was sick and I wasn't able to stay as long as I wanted to. And that's another reason why I'm doing this video is I want other people to be able to do this at disasters. I've never charged for doing a chainsaw at a disaster. And uh, this is just a real great way to help people out at disasters. But it's very easy to put together. The saw jaw you can order. Um, and what I've done is I've made, I put a screw through the saw jaw. And there's a really good reason for that. Um, a lot of times uh, people will take their chainsaw off, or the chain off the chainsaw. And when they do that, uh, you, they bring them to you. And if you don't have a setup to, um, sharpen off the saw you uh, really end up not being able to help them too much so what I've done is I've devised a way to sharpen uh, a chain off the saw and I'm going to show you how that's done and I can sharpen four foot long chains with this method and set it in to the vise, the saw jaw. This was born out of necessity at Katrina. Um, a guy brought me uh, 86 chains that needed to be done. The same principle for sharpening a chain in this position as on the saw is the dull the, the dull white line is across the front of the tooth. You take your Dremel tool and you just lightly touch it and then they're sharp. When you've gone all the way around you just switch and you go the opposite direction. And that's all there is to it. Uh, sharpen a chain when it's not on the chainsaw itself. And this is very important to a piece of equipment. Uh, I just use an old taint, uh, extending tent uh, pole and the same stuff that you'd use otherwise. Uh, what I like to do at a, at a disaster is I like to uh, set up and sharpen. Sometimes I drive around the community and sharpen uh, at the different locations. I um, it's been one of the most gratifying things I've ever done in my life and I really feel privileged to have been able to do this. Um, one of the other things that I do is I talk to people about avoiding life's greatest disaster. And life's greatest disaster is, uh, I used to think, was that a man or woman would uh, go to hell. But really what it is, is a man or woman leading their children to hell. 
And uh, without coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, people will go to hell. Jesus said, there, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And the question, automatic question is, uh, that I ask at disasters, is if this disaster claimed your life, would you have gone to heaven or hell? And that makes people think. And uh, uh, if it's anything but yes, uh, I know I'd go to heaven, then they're in trouble. I hope so, and I know so, are the only two religions in the world. And I want everybody to have a no-so relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And the way you get that is to admit that you're a sinner, realize that you can't save yourself from your sin. There's nothing that you can do. There's none righteous, no, not one, and not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And Romans 10 tells us that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, that's the way to salvation. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I just invite you right now to call on the Lord and be saved. I'm Tom Stanton, Chainsaw Man.